stranger. That is a Portuguese man of war, and we got to talk about it. Yeah. The Portuguese man of war is a species of siphonophore, which to us just means it's not a jellyfish. It's actually not one thing. What I mean by that is the Portuguese man of war is a bunch of single cell organisms that colonize together to make a big floaty mess that basically just drift on the ocean surface. Unlike jellyfish, the Portuguese man of war is incapable of moving in one single direction. So instead, it just floats around and lets the ocean take it wherever it may. Now for what they have below the surface, you should probably watch out for. They have tentacles that may not be necessarily dangerous to humans, but definitely discomforting. These tentacles can grow anywhere from 30 feet long to over 150 feet long. They use these tentacles to sting and paralyze their prey before eating them. They enjoy eating fish and other smaller sea creatures. Though these tentacles do deliver a venomous sting, they're not deadly to humans. But you will probably experience pain, burning, and these red welts that come and go for like five weeks straight. So do with that information what you may, and as always guys, peace and love, baby. That is literally one of the last things you'd want to touch in the ocean. What we're looking at here is a blue ringed octopus, which just so happens to be one of the most venomous marine animals in the world. This tiny little hand sized octopus contains a very potent neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin. Tiny little octopus holds enough venom to take out 20 adults in minutes. One of the biggest issues with their venomous bite is the actual bite because you probably won't even feel it. But once it kicks in, it can cause muscle numbness, nausea, loss of sight, and loss of motor skill. And then after all that, you can also pass away. So just remember, rule number one, don't touch bright colored animals. And as always guys, peace and love, baby. I know we talked about it before, but I guess you guys didn't learn the lesson the first time, so we gotta talk about it. This is just bee poop. What you're looking at here is a bee pooping on a jacket. But here's where the facts come in. During winter, bees don't leave their hive for up to three to four months. And for some reasons, bees do not poop in the hive. So what do they do? They hold it for months. Luckily for worker bees, they get to leave after those three to four months. But the queen bee just never leaves the hive. So the question is, how does the queen bee, you know, go number two? And that's exactly where the worker bees get to work. They kind of get the Janaya Eco treatment, you know, groceries. And then they do with it what they must. Also, I know some of you think that bees only live like four to six weeks, which is true for the summer. But during the colder seasons, they can live up to six to seven months. But anyways, that's just bee poop, bro. And as always, guys, peace and love, baby. Today is Valentine's Day, so that means that love is in the air. And what's a better way to celebrate love than a love story? So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. You guessed it, we're talking about the anglerfish. But not this anglerfish, we're talking about this one. The male anglerfish. I'm not gonna lie, he got it rough. Not only does he look like this, but he can usually only grow to about three inches long, while his significant other could possibly grow to three whole feet long. Once a male finds a mate, he bites onto her belly and then latches on forever. Literally until their bodies fuse together. I'm talking blood vessels and all. For the rest of his life, his job now is to help her pump blood. So technically, once he finds his mate, his life is over. And the crazy thing about it is, he's not special. This female can have up to eight different parasitic mates. So fellas, just remember, it can always be worse. Enjoy your Valentine, spend some time with some loved ones, and as always guys, peace and love, baby. You definitely seen that right, and we gotta talk about it. Though that may have seemed weird, this is very normal and necessary for a moose. Well, at least a male one. A moose can grow antlers that can reach lengths up to six feet wide and weigh 40 pounds. So the question is, why do moose have antlers? That's right, 
to mate. For moose, antlers are an important part for the whole breeding process. During the fall, which just so happens to be mating season, females tend to go for males with larger antlers. So once fall is over and winter arrives, males will usually shed off their antlers which is probably a relief for the males imagine walking around with a 40 pound tree on your head just to find love every year doesn't seem like the most fun time but as always guys peace and love baby 5 a.m 5 a.m is when i woke up to one of you tagging me in this now do i know what this is yes it's a weevil but at the same time i have no idea what this is just just stick with me these are beetles. Weevils belong to a super family of beetles called Curculonidae. They're known for having very long snouts. Remember I said this first picture was a weevil, but I didn't know what it is because there's 97,000 different species of weevils, like this giraffe weevil. Now just think about the fact that this is a subspecies of beetles, which led me to wonder how many species of beetles are there? There are anywhere from 350,000 to 400,000 different species of beetles. Mind you, there are only 1.5 million different animal species on this planet, which means that beetles make up 25% of all species on this planet. So like I said before, as much as I may know what this is, I have no idea what that is. And as always guys, peace and love, baby. Okay, we got a cute one today. We got a cute one. We're talking about prairie dogs, and as you can see, they're not actually dogs. They're in the same family as squirrels, groundhogs, and chipmunks. They were named after dogs because they kind of bark. They have one of, if not the most advanced vocabularies in the animal kingdom. Recent research has determined that they can describe color, species, and even size. Weird fact, mating season only lasts about one hour. So you gotta get it done quick out there. Prairie dogs are all about family. They live in these tight-knit groups called coteries. The average coterie has one to two breeding males, several breeding females, and a few pups. And they'll do whatever it takes to protect their own. Speaking of family, I've joined a new family, the Anaka Power family. And no, this isn't the start of me joining every company that sends me an offer. I've been following these guys for over five years, and without your support, this wouldn't happen. So I appreciate you guys so much. Shop Anaka, code Corey. And as always, man, peace and love, baby.